Weld the world. Weld the world. Yeah, low mains voltage. It me when they talk about mains, you have to remember we're talking about an international crowd here. Main, that's your amperage. Your voltage, it's too low to strike. We have to think about it this way. We have a certain amount of amperage that needs to go from one end to the other, right? For our rod. If it's too low, it's just like that hose when you turn it on, right? If it's too low, by the time it gets to the end, it's not enough to strike on your material. Okay, so you need to make sure that you pay, pay close attention to that. That's what we were talking about, like pulling off the, the, sla uh, the, the flock or the slag. All right, solidification cracks. Same kind of thing, guys. We need to make sure that we, A, pay attention to your heat, but when we quench, we can cause cracking when it's starting to solidify. We quench it too quick. Now, remember, we're only going to use quenching, A, unless it's specified, or B, for practice. And sometimes they'll quench in oil, or they'll quench in different types of solutions to make the, the weld harder. We only do it here so that we can practice faster. Otherwise, you'd be sitting for ages waiting for your plate to cool down. All right. <laughs> Let's talk about lack of fusion. What do they mean by lack of fusion? It doesn't stick very well. If it's not sticking either bead to bead or to my base metal, what's gonna happen? It's gonna fall apart, right? Okay, so what's happening when I have lack of fusion? Okay, so follow that back a little bit more. We don't have enough penetration, we don't have enough fusion. Voltage, Voltage or amperage, right? We need more heat. We need to apply more heat. Now remember, this doesn't uh, apply exclusively to stick or anything else. These apply to almost every process. If we don't have enough heat to properly melt everything, your weld will fail, okay? So we wanna make sure that we're using the correct amount of heat, right? Remember what we talked about last week, whether we had a good weld or a bad weld, right? Okay, some of that comes down to manipulation, right? Angle, travel speed, and my heat. This affects how I'm going to have fusion into my weld. This may also mean I slice my weld open and I did not have correct bead placement. I can lack fusion because I wasn't able to place my bead correctly, okay? So we wanna make sure that we're placing our bead correctly. The other thing would be cleaning. If I need to clean the slag out of my, off of my, my well, I need to make sure that I'm removing it all, especially if I have a weld that's too convex because then it slips right into that little edge and then you try to weld over it and essentially there's no fusion and there's no penetration, okay? So we need to, you need to be very, very careful of that. Anybody who does MIG, especially for thicker sections, this is one of the biggest problems because it's not hot enough. You need to pay close attention when you're welding thicker sections with MIG. Crater cracks. How do crater cracks happen? Oh, I should, I should re rephrase that. Where do crater cracks happen? At the end, uh, what's another name for them? They call it a star crack. Now, why, why would it happen at the end? What's happening there? All right, well, what's my two, the two places in my well that I am almost certain to have defect? The beginning and the end, why? One end is too cold, right? One end is, could be too hot. This is also when we use a runoff plate. This means starting all the way on the, this end of the runoff plate and ending over here because I have good weld here and I know I will. So there's less issue for discontinuity in that area. Now, crater cracks or star cracks are caused because I've just lifted my rod off or whatever I'm doing. All right, we're done. We didn't allow it to fill enough. So now all of the stresses come into that little end and that's the stress relief right there. It's starring out. In some cases it's acceptable, but in most it is not. So you need to make sure that you properly end your weld. A lot of people will have issue, especially in the beginning of the weld, usually with porosity, because they may strike farther away. And sometimes at the end, with porosity as well. So be very, very close and pay attention to what you're doing near the ends. All right, undercut. Ooh, this is everybody's nemesis. What causes undercut? Too much heat? Okay, what else? Or too long. Mm, yes and no. Travel speed. Ooh, okay. Where do we normally see undercut? Okay, we'll see it in the edges, on the edge of our toes, okay? And usually this will happen in vertical and sometimes even horizontal. When we cut, uh, let's say we're doing vertical, okay? And instead of staying straight in, we're going back and forth and kind of whipping like this. So what happens is we cut into the material with our arc and we don't stay there long enough. And then we move. And then we cut again, and then we move. So we're not depositing any material there. So it's actually lack of material 
and we've eaten away the edge of our base metal. Or we can even eat away, um, if we have multiple beads, we can even eat away some of the bead. Now, it also means if we're running it too hot or not letting it cool down enough when we have a multi-bead pass, that we can be eating into it. It's just too hot for it, okay? So we need to make sure that we stay on our toes. Every time we go, especially in vertical, we wanna hold, 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 hold. This allows us to stop for a moment, let the material fill up, and then you can keep on going. So usually this will happen when you have a fast travel speed, incorrect amperage, incorrect manipulation, and incorrect angle. So all of those things that make a good weld, well, you snowball them, you do them all wrong, something's gonna happen. Okay. Usually it's under. Okay, dokey, what else we got? Porosity. Ooh, I hate porosity. Why does porosity happen? Well, there's a couple of different reasons for porosity. Porosity, when we look at it, porosity is little gas bubbles that get stuck in our weld. That's really what it is. It's nitrogen and oxygen trying to exit our weld before it solidifies. And while it's solidifying, it's coming out and leaving little holes. Right. And we can even have some that are called wormhole and it'll actually travel if you have big bubbles. What this means is we have no atmosphere around our weld. When we do stick, that flux creates that atmosphere. When we do flux, it creates that atmosphere. When we do MIG, it creates that atmosphere. When we do TIG, the gas creates that atmosphere. Right. So we're protecting our weld. Should it blow away or should we be too far away, we're not protecting our weld anymore. Makes sense, right? Okay, how do we fix it? What's the solution? Not just angle, arc length. Arc length is essential if you're getting porosity. It means you're too far away, especially if you're running stick. What happens if I'm getting porosity with MIG? Well, MIG has a gas. It doesn't have a flux that's creating that atmosphere. So that means my gas could be blown away. It also means that if my equipment is dirty in my MIG, it impedes the gas flow, which means I might not be having enough to shield it, okay? So we have to think of all those little different things, or my gas isn't up high enough. It's that trickle that's barely coming out, not able to cover everything. But when it happens, how do we fix it? Because it will happen, how do we fix it? What do we do? Arc length. Oh, you should say decrease, not increase. Uh -huh. Anywho, well, what we really need to think about is how do we fix it? If porosity happens, which it will happen, I guarantee it, every once in a while it happens to everybody. It's not that you're a poor welder, it just means something else in our atmosphere happened, right? So if it happens and you see those bubbles and you don't want them in there and you know that it's not something that's good for my well, we must grind it out. If you do not grind it out fully, Val, what happens? Continue to travel on up every layer. So Val had a little bit of porosity right near one of his base, base layers. He's on the top, just about the top layer, and he still has porosity in that same spot. For some reason, when we slap another weld on there, it doesn't fix it. All it says is, oh, hey, gas bubbles, come on up. Here I am, and it really makes a problem. So in order to fully remove it, you must grind out the porosity. Putting another bead on it doesn't fix it. So we need to be really make sure that if you're gonna fix porosity, fix it right. Don't try to slap something on top of it thinking, eh, no worries, for good. Ah, paint will cover it. Don't do that. Fix it right, and that way you know that that bead's gonna be right. Okie dokie. Slag inclusions. This makes me sad. Uh, why, why do people get slag inclusions? Your slag completely, right? Think about that. I want you to think a little step further. Why could they not get the slag off? Possibly, it could be, but here's the thing. Poor bead placement. Last week we talked about bead placement and making sure that we put everything in there correct. Now if I have overlap in the wrong places, I'm gonna overlap that piece of slag, right? Or if my weld is too convex and I try to get in there and I can't because it's made that little teeny tiny sliver. Or the other one is the old timer says, hey, don't worry about it, slag will burn out. If you're doing x-ray quality welds or you know, you have actually some moral to this and you actually want to take out all your slag, it's important, it will not burn out. No matter how many people say, oh, don't worry about it, you'll be fine. It's lies, I tell you. It really is. Because a lot of old timers will say, don't worry about it, you're okay, don't worry about it. But then really think about it then, why do we have slag inclusions? Because somebody didn't worry about it. And when you have enough of these, your part fails. The building falls down. If we really think about it, the codes and standards are there because something happened in the past 
that forced us to make it. So we really have to kind of think about it. Okay, hmm, if I'm getting slag inclusions, maybe my angle's wrong. You know, maybe if I'm getting slag stuck in between my beads, maybe I don't have good enough overlap. So I might need to be paying attention to what I'm doing and kind of taking a step back for a moment to make sure that I'm putting these in the correct place. Okay, it's really important. Lack of penetration. Lack of penetration. What does that mean? Not enough penetration. For the most part, it happens because of this. Okay, lack of penetration can happen when my bevel faces the angle is incorrect. This means if I try to get my rod down here, as far as I can get my rod, maybe all the way down here, which means I can't penetrate all the way to the root correctly. This can also mean my root opening is incorrect. Instead of having that quarter inch, well, I kind of goofed, made it a little too tight. I can get this. Usually what will happen is you get about here. That's about as far as you can go. So it's really important that we pay attention to those things, as they say, included angle, groove angle, or bevel angle, to make sure that we have the correct angle here, but also that we have correct root opening. Because root opening really is there so that you can access everything. You'll see this a lot on stuff that's backed, and as you guys go forward and take welding certs, you'll know if you have penetration all the way with that backing. You can hit it with the hammer on the back and it goes plop, and then you can see that you weren't all the way down in your root because this should take you eons to get off if you've burnt in correctly. Lack of penetration also means I may not have enough heat either. If all of these things are as correct as can be and I'm not using enough heat, it also may mean that I don't have enough penetration or I have maybe incorrect angles. I'm not paying attention to my bead placement either, okay? So we need to make sure that we're really paying attention to that. I think we got the majority of the good stuff. All right, do we have any questions? Concerns? That's usually the, what happens is that if we make it too, too tight, and then we don't have access from the other side, you're never gonna get it. So eventually what'll happen is if you have lack of penetration, you'll eventually have to grind it out so that it's wide enough so that you can actually get in there and do it correctly. For the most part though, this usually happens when we're beveling. When we're having issues like that, not as much on like a big building because usually everything's kind of put in place already. It's usually when we have a part that needs to have, you know, some sort of beveling and we need to be able to get in there. All right, anything else? Concerns? It's not a remarks. Go weld the world. Please like and subscribe. Stay tuned for another part. Well the world. Well the world.